I'm Jim Collison, live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Theme Thursday, Season 4, recorded on April 5th, 2018. Theme Thursday is a Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths themes one at a time. And today's theme is adaptability. If you have questions, comments, or contributions during the webcast, we do have a live chat room. It's available for you right below the main video window. Just look down there, a little chat room available for you. Choose the login button, bottom left, put your name in, or choose the guest account, put your name in where it says guest, hit submit, and you're in our chat room. We'll be taking questions live. You can also resize that. This came up in our conversation last week. There's some red squares in the upper right-hand corner. If you click on those, it'll pop the chat out, and you can put it anywhere on your screen that you want. So great way to stay up with us in chat. If you're listening to the recorded version or have questions about custom strengths coaching solutions, send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. By the way, that's a really great address for most of your questions, by the way. Coaching at gallup.com is a great way to send in. Uh, don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com for all your Clifton Strengths coaching resources and training needs. You can also catch the video and both streaming and downloadable, downloadable audio for offline listening. That's called podcasting. That's what we call it. Uh, all available, all the links to it, all the different ways to get this done. I I have most of them covered. They're available for you on our coach's blog. Go out to coaching.gallup.com. Click on the resources tab. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see it there. One more thing. Don't forget, rate and review this podcast if you're on iTunes. That's a great way to, to just let us know how things are going there. If you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe. Hit the bell for the alerts. That way you get alerted when we go live. That's for the live channel. You can do the same thing on our on our Clifton, or on our strengths um channel as well. Subscribe in both places. And when the videos come out, you'll get notified that they are there. And you can like us on Spreaker if that's the way you're listening. Micah Librant is our host today. She's a workplace consultant here at Gallup. And Micah, this theme Thursday, as we talk about adaptability, I remember a season three adaptability where like we really had to be adaptive, I think on that, didn't we? Weren't you at a truck stop or something? Like I that? listened to it this morning and you know what? It was better than I thought it was going through it. <laughs> it turns out the end product was okay, but everything went wrong and we still proceeded. Yeah, we, we made it through uh, adaptability is seven, eight, nine, something like that for me. I should look that up. I don't know why I don't know that, but uh, it's, it's high top 10. I use it a lot. We spent a lot of time. If you just catching Theme Thursday for the first time. We have three seasons for you. One of my high school interns went back and listened to 15 hours of her top five, by the Whoa. way. Yeah, she what listened did it all, do for her? all three seasons. Say something good. Well, first I apologized and said, <laughs> I'm sorry you had to listen to me for I'm your manager and for 15 hours. Uh, but she said, no, it was great. She really enjoyed that process of working through. See, she So what she did is she binged on season, so she, her, her number one, I, I don't forget what it is. Let's say it's input. Yeah. Uh, well, let's just say it might be input. <laughs> just, saying, just saying it could be. Uh, and then it was, uh, you know, season one, season two, season three. She just binged. And then number two is learner. And then she boom, boom, boom. Number three, analytical. One, two, three. And she just binged right through them. And that's 15 hours. Uh, a little less. Dude, but. that's awesome. Think about 15 hours of your top five that you could just give away for free to your clients. Boom. Yeah. Right so and you there. can set those up in playlists on YouTube and send them the link and just and, say, hey, here's your top you know, five. The best thing is it's not just the same thing over and over again. I've I've really enjoyed going back because I go back and listen to previous uh, seasons the morning, every Thursday morning. So I start. And so you're going to hear like define it and fall in love with it in season one, compare it and contrast it and play with it with other themes in season two. What's it sound like in leaders in season three and in season four, Jim, what are you going to hear? Uh, we're going to talk about uh, success factors yeah, and how do we actually with doing it. something with it. So pretty excited. All right, let's dig in, Micah, when we think about adaptability. You've got a little brief on this. Tell us what it is. Super pumped about adaptability. It's top five for me um, and for four of the five people I grew up with in my family. Um, so you can give me a little therapy here. But adaptability in a brief, it's about being urgent, current, present, responsive, in touch, maybe, um, calm. Uh, I also think about maybe the word a protector. It's a relationship building theme. And I think because it's so responsive, so urgent, so in the moment, you it, you can almost protect others from chaos because you can, you can respond and, and bounce back with them. There's an openness to adaptability. If you compare adaptability to the theme that it's least likely to show up with, it's focus. So in a, a, a randomized sample of a quarter of a million completes, we look at which themes show up together in people's top five. Um, the, the two that are furthest from being likely are adaptability and, and focus. Um, 
And focus, if you think about it, is about closing things down so that you can narrow your energy toward one project, one task, one person, one one sort of area of focus. Adaptability, thinking about that comparison makes me want to use the word openness for adaptability because what that's about is it's being present to things, being almost kind of porous to your universe, um, being being very aware, um, using all your fe- all your feelers um, and and being very um, sort of in touch to what's going on. Um, I think about it as um, if if the rest of our themes are are sort of textbook, then adaptability is Twitter. It's it's I didn't read this somewhere. I didn't plan this. It's in the moment. It's right there. It's 280 characters go. I like the term just in time as well, just in time delivery or just in time fulfillment. Uh, I think that's the friend of uh, of adaptability in a lot of ways and being able to, uh, we've got this, it's a firefighter mentality. It's what makes me a really good firefighter is I can adapt to anything that's thrown at me and I can move very, very quickly. I also have activator to go with it, which is really, really nice, right? Because that, that just, I think kind of is an accelerant um, for adaptability. So um, good. So when we're at our best, what does it look like, Mike? When adaptability is at its best, you are gracefully responding to the needs of people around you. Um, that might be responding to clients, responding to your own teammates, responding to loved ones. Um, I think you're you're really masterfully navigating the here and now, um, increasing the awareness even perhaps of others. So the question we're answering here is like, what what can you tell people is valuable about you? You know, when you're at, when you're really at your best. And I think it is that ability to constantly have your, your finger on the pulse of what's going on. Now, a lot of themes can do that. Um, I think for example, competition is going to increase awareness of the team by being able to compare yourself to other teams or to other products or to other industries. Um, analytical is going to increase awareness if you give them some time to go find some other data. Um, but adaptability naturally is going to do that without needing to be a a comparison or an information dump or even a feelings based adaptability is just going to say I'm here. Um, It's real. Uh, The the present moment I think is more tangible, um, more, uh, more highly concentrated for people with high adaptability than for those than for people without it, it doesn't take planning, it doesn't take reflecting, it just takes being there. Yeah, and non people without adaptability can adapt, right? I mean, they can do things. It's I think the success factor in this is it really thrives in that environment, not just survives, yes. but thrives, right? I um I coached two execs yesterday. Uh, one of them had adaptability number thirty four, and he was super super worried about it. And um, I said, well, tell me, you know, what worries you about that? And he said, well, I'm in charge of. Uh, I'm basically in charge of change um, without giving away exactly what he did. It was basically what he said. And I said, you know, it's important to remember here that um, our, our themes aren't telling us what we do. They're, our, they're not the the end result or the product. They're the way we get to that end result. So, of course, I said, you know, what do you have that helps you navigate change? And his was higher ranger uh, and high responsibility. So he's constantly juggling and moving some pieces. But then we talked about, he asked me, he goes, well, how's that different from adaptability? And the Clifton Strengths theme of adaptability isn't, I can uh, I can respond to change. It's I can't wait to find change. I thrive when when there's variance, when there's variety. I am spontaneous and and I am delighted when things um, need my in in time responsiveness. Um, I think sometimes when you're at your best with adaptability, it can even look like you're anticipating what's next. You're probably not. Really, probably what's really going on is you're so good in the moment that it almost looks like you're planning ahead. Um, and it's probably, we'll talk about this later, how to, how to support and and help develop and recognize other people with adaptability. But I think one of the things that you can do to really honor that in other people is to replay back that highlight reel and help folks who are in the moment after, after that moment has passed, help them realize just how magical and how in control and how present they were in that moment. Because I think when it happens really well, um, it's usually at, at peak experiences or at specific events where you can track back, wow, yeah, somebody with high adaptability helped us get through that hard day or helped us um, navigate that that piece that we didn't see coming or were our, the calm in the middle of, of an emergency. It's that ability to be unruffled by change and chaos. Like I like the fact that you've pointed it forward. Oftentimes we try to look at it backwards. In other words, I'm just adapting the things that are happening, but you use the word kind of anticipating 
that which is yet to come ahead. In other words, knowing there's probably 50 possible things that can happen here. I've done some of them. So when we get to this point, I can pull on that experience of the past and know it's been successful. And even if the group won't follow me, I can adapt to that and then change in a direction to, to get them going. So I love the forward look at this. I think oftentimes we try to look back and uh, and so fun to anticipate. When we think about things we should do more of with for those high in adaptability, what are those? What should we raise our hand for? You know, I think raise your hand for some short-term goals. Look for things that can be started and completed in one day. Um, what could even be started and completed in one hour? Like done and dusted and move on to the next thing. Uh, there's there's no unwritten rule somewhere that says in order for your goal to be worthwhile, it's got to take a year. Um, so look for those shorter term goals. Also look for opportunities to interact with people during really critical times. Um, I, I I'm hoping to try and do a play on words here. Instead of saying, put yourself in harm's way, if you have high adaptability, put yourself in chaos's way. Go to places where you know that you're gonna be needed for that responsiveness, that ability to uh, to be the person who says, I can take this, I got this. This is chaos to everybody else, but it's it's delightful to me. Yeah, and chaos actually has a way of cleansing environments as well, which I think because the chaos creates confusion, you can create clarity. I can't, that's, I stole that from Jane, by that the way, was Jane. Deep. Well, that was pretty amazing, wasn't it? That's Jane Miller. That's <laughs> our, our COO here, president COO. Um, it, but there's some power inside of groups. There's some power in that chaos and chaos can just kind of clear things up. And so don't, uh, lots of people won't embrace that or they're afraid of that. I think those high in adaptability have that superpower to use that to the group's favor and then lead them through it, right? Get them through those pieces, provide that, that stability, so to speak, to get them through. You know, what's true of highly talented people and probably true of people who are highly talented in adaptability is it, it doesn't feel exceptional when they're when they're in that frame of mind. So um, I would bet if you've got high adaptability, it's almost going to be difficult for you to say, go seek chaos, because to you, it's not going to feel like chaos. Right. So it might be an exercise in figuring out what um, what kinds of spontaneity or what kinds of um, adaptiveness or, or needs to be urgent, what kind of needs to be responsive, um, throw other people off so that you can filter that through and go there because chances are it's not going to throw you off. I mean, I even think about myself when I've high adaptability, I think about times when people have given me feedback that, wow, you know, that, that, that was a crazy day and you didn't seem like it was crazy. I feel like I go into this mode where I, it just all makes sense. It's a little bit rain, man. Like it, I, it's never to me, is it chaos? It's something that's really fun and, attractive and and things just fall into place where I know what to do. I know who to contact. I know where to go next. Mm -hmm. You know, as we think about the things we ask for, it's, if we've got that theme and th some things we're asking for, I know for me, I like to ask for structure. And I know that sounds counterintuitive to adaptability because again, we sometimes stereotype it into the fire hose of randomness and mm -hmm. some of those kinds of things, right? And yet for me, I can be most adaptive when I have a framework first to work from. Right. And then I know my parameters, right? I can't, right. I don't just live in an empty space where I just kind of bounce around and things work. I do need and enjoy, and actually, I think the parameters help me maximize my adaptability. Again, I have maximizer number three, so that, that may fit into that as well. But the parameters help me maximize my flexibility. What else do we need to ask for? Jim, what do you mean when you say parameters? Like, what would be an example of something that's helpful for you? Let's take Theme Thursday for an example. So we started with season one, no idea. When when we were starting with season one, we had no idea what we were going to do, but I had the call to coach framework in place. I knew how we were going to start this. I knew kind of what it needed to do. I kind of had some ideas of where we wanted to go with it, but it was still kind of a work in progress. And I enjoyed the the inconsistencies of it. If you go through season one, man, we are really trying to find our footing in that program. I think, uh, I think we started with activator. I'm pretty sure that's what we started with in season one and which was appropriate. Kurt, Kurt uh, enjoyed that irony in it. And, um, and so we had a framework, but I, I wanted to be able to go around that framework and develop. We have done that now for four seasons, Micah, we have practiced None of them have been the same. We've changed ways of doing things. We've tried different bringing in guests spontaneously, not bringing in guests spontaneously, you know, having some um, some of those things go on. So 
Micah, I like that framework. I, I kind of need it, but I also need to know I can move off the framework to be successful if I need to. It's it's like adaptability. <laughs> this is going to sound awful, but it's almost like by itself, adaptability doesn't have a shape. And you need to know what the rules are that you, you maybe can or can't break in order to give it a shape and give it something to respond to. Yeah. Yeah. And I almost need the rules to break them sometimes. I almost need to know what they are yeah. so I can go beyond them. If we're really going to shake some things up, if it's intentionally that we're breaking the rules, I need to know what the rules are first so I know yeah. what I'm breaking. Right. And so I, for me, it's just the way it is for me. And I think I, I can't speak for everybody with adaptability. Putting the framework in place first so I know what I know what I'm dealing with, then adapting around it is way more powerful for me. I've had way more success that way. So on that question of what do you ask for or what environment best supports your talent, maybe I'd add to that list, ask for um, rules and ask for how important it is that you follow those rules. Yeah, or outcomes. What yeah. do my outcomes need to be? And yeah. clarity. Right, yeah, some clarity from from that. I need to get be able to get to that point. And is it okay? I have to ask those questions sometimes. It is, a, is it okay if I adapt? How much freedom do I have? Where do we need to go? Like those are all important questions for me. Sure, absolutely. I think it's it's a little bit ask for or develop a better understanding of what resources are available too. So um, I think about you know when adaptability is really on it on point. It's probably playing in a place where you know what the what the solid pieces are that you're touching. Think about it as like uh, baseball. I know it's not an international translation here, but which bases you're going to touch. Um, and, and you might run one home run. You might run all the way around. You might have a grand slam and make everybody go all the way around those bases, but you, those bases don't move and the bases are anchored. And if you know what those available resources are that you're playing with, you can think about those as a base. So you're going to touch first or you're going to touch second or you know maybe in between you're going to lead off a little bit and you're going to do things differently. But you're familiar familiarity with where those bases are, what you can get from them and, and how to how to get to the next one, I think is going to increase your ability to, to adapt. So to take this into a more literal context and less of a metaphor, it's um, if you are going to be uh, constantly playing, let's say you're a teacher and you're going to be super adaptable and things go haywire every day in schools, um, you probably would be better adapting if you knew exactly who the other teachers are in the building uh, so that you can adapt to those to those kids or so that you knew exactly what the expectation of the curriculum was. Think about what are your anchor points and how can you get more familiar with those? How can you practice really being um, not not an expertise, but a an awareness of what's there. A lot maybe like a ranger needs to know what what are the balls that I'm juggling. I think adaptability can do really well if you know what's available. Um, I I got to have two coaching calls this week. It's only Thursday. I got coached twice this week, and um, one of them was around BP10, and the other one was specifically just just about my own strengths. And um, my coach uh, helped me replay a moment of my own adaptability, and it was a day when everything had gone wrong um, for somebody else who was with me, and I had just really taken over. Um, a friend of mine was visiting, and um, her phone got stolen on a beach. And I, um, it was about a four hour period of how do we figure out how to get her a new phone? How do we uh, find uh, available locations? How do I find a sprint store that's still open? All this stuff happened. And I think about, yeah, I was really good in that moment. I took over my adaptability, almost looked like command in that situation. Um, I enjoyed being able to be the person who was making decisions when everybody around me seemed kind of paralyzed by this really bad event. Um, I, I never felt like I was slowing down, but now replaying that, I'm thinking I could have been so much better if I had a better understanding of um, where physically the location where I was, um, if I if I had studied where I was. So you put that back into a business context. Think about how much better you can be at adapting to a situation if you sort of pre-plan. So understand your craft, understand the people who you're working with, understand um, maybe even how your current project relates to the, the big goals that your organization has. All of that is going to be great pre-work. And for people with high adaptability, working ahead of time almost isn't helpful. But think about how you can just increase your awareness of possible scenarios. And that's going to um, increase your effectiveness as you are being current and present and aware when big situations happen. Yeah. I also find adaptability is really powerful in the context of helping other people to be adaptable, especially if they don't have it. And mm -hmm. to be that kind of voice of it's going to be okay and I can help you adjust. 
seems to be one that's really powerful with people because they're not doing this alone. Yeah. And they can kind of use your adaptability and to be okay with the situation. I, I can't tell you how many times, Mike, I've been in teams where it's it's getting a little chaotic and I can step in and say, guys, we can do this. And let's think through some of these different options. Now, there's some arranger and there's some other things in their ideation in there probably. But it's that ability. If I can change. It's going to be okay. And I will help you be your change agent, right? Mm-hmm. I can be your friend through this change agent. Where else in relationships do you think that's we can be a benefit to people that way? I like I can be your change agent. I think the reason adaptability can do that is because the the present is real to them. I think sometimes if you don't have adaptability, the present just feels if something changes, that changes where you are today. And it just feels like a deviation from where you thought you were. Um, It feels like something's off. It feels like a departure. Whereas to people with high adaptability, it's never that. It's just here we are. And so loaning yourself to to say, here we are. I think in many ways you're a change agent, but the other role you could play for people is just a a tour guide. (laughs) You could say even just, hey, this is what's going on right now. Because there's, I think there's sometimes a, it, it looks a little bit blurry to folks when things go, uh, when things are unplanned. You can just be, be the person who says, to your right, you're going to see that uh, these are the emotions that are in play. And to your left, if you look out the window, you're going to see that this is the event that is happening. And here's here's some of the things that that's going to create for our future. I think maybe think about narrating change for folks. Uh, you can, you can, use your awareness and your openness um, to, to really help it feel less daunting when change yeah. happens. We have this question in a Q12 best friend at work. And I think uh, oftentimes we, if we're just friends to them <laughs> and say, can be a I, friend? Can, I can help you and I can be a friend yeah. and no matter what's going on, I can, ha- I can adapt to it. So let's, you know, I think, I think about someone who's having a major life traumatic event, somebody who's, you know, experiencing a new child or a child with special needs or, you know, a new job. I've just got laid off. How can I come in and help them emotionally, not just with results, but emotional results of let me help you adapt to the situation and I'll be your friend through it. I mean, I think, man, if we did a little bit more of that, we probably would be a great culture. Yeah, it would be, it would be pretty awesome. What do we need? It's such a good reminder that it's the relationship building theme that adaptability isn't something that you have to wait for a life crisis to happen, but it's about knowing what people around you need and being able to give it regardless of what you had planned. Yeah. I, I think that's where it's most powerful, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we when we do it in the context of relationships and and man, I know, I mean, I, I've just done it dozens of times for people, including my daughter who I was hoping would make it out. Uh, she's trying to make us live here at this point, but to have a bit, to be adaptable for her. She was having a situation at school and it was just, wasn't going well. And I just said, Hey, I'm just coming. Like, I'm going to come down. Like, it doesn't matter. We'll rearrange some things here at work and I'll just, I'll come down and figure it out. And that, you know, that's, that's a superpower. I think that, uh, that people could use. What should we, Micah, what should we worry less about though? With, with adaptability? What kind of things should this we worry is less a about? a question of like, who are you not? <laughs> Unless you've got some other uh, themes that are playing there. Um, you should worry less about long-term goals. Um, annual resolutions are just not going to seem real to you. Uh, if you have high adaptability, you might want to just translate what's going on today into what we've accomplished on a grander scale. So you might want to think about... Um, how are we present right now? And maybe what's that going to lead to, but don't set yourself up to have to make uh, annual goals just because everybody is, and you think that's what makes you (laughs) successful. Um, And in that vein, this is another one of those things that um, it's probably a clue to talent when you say you're going to think I'm crazy, but, (laughs) but don't worry about doing too much prep work. Um, This might be hard for other people to understand who don't have adaptability, but you really are your best when you're a little bit pushed off guard. Um, I remember I I had a fantastic experience in a sorority in college, uh, but I remember the first time that I went through a recruitment on, on the, 
member side. So we're trying to recruit new members. And a lot of what um, we were trying to do was get to know these girls before they came through the door. I've got adaptability and woo. And so I, I did what everybody else was doing. I stayed up all night studying these profiles and getting to, you know, rem remembering their face and where they came from and what some of their interests were so that I could really have a great conversation with them because that's what everyone was doing. That was prep work. That was homework. And then I showed up and I was just like, completely off. I was not good. I was not comfortable. I couldn't make anyone else comfortable. All I could think was, I already know all the questions that I'm about to ask you about where you're from and what's going on. And it just felt so off. So the next day I thought, well, let me just throw out all my notes. I'm going to meet a fresh batch of women and, and I'm just going to be me and just go meet them. And it went so much better that next day. And so today when I'm in meetings, um, and I'm in meetings a lot, I, I love meetings, but I don't love them for the same reason everybody else in the meeting tends to love them. I'm not listening for long-term timelines. I'm not listening for homework. I'm listening for what needs to be done right now. Uh, and so I feel like sometimes I have to hide that from folks because it looks like I'm aloof, but doing too much prep work for people with high adaptability can, I think, actually be not beneficial. Yeah. No, I, I agree. When we're working with adaptability, Micah, what what can we expect? What should we look for? Um, expect attention to the now, um, perhaps even a preference of the present. People with high adaptability are going to be a lot more turned on by what, talking about what's happening today than even what's about to happen in the future. I think you can also expect followership. Um, people with high adaptability know how to go along with what's being presented, not just saying that they're sort of lemmings and they're going to follow whatever you do, but they know the ability and the, the leadership aspect of being the first person to say, I'll adopt what you're doing. <laughs> I like what you've got going on there. Um, so look to them to be those early adopters. Um, I think also expect frequent change. Change happens uh, without, with or without people with high adaptability. Change is going to happen. But adaptability is going to be aware of it. So they're going to notice that that change and pro and flex to it probably before anyone else does. So you can look to the people with adaptability on your team to be the early adopters, but to also be kind of those those radars of saying, hey, things are shifting. What, what about recognizing? Because we know from our database that recognition really struggles, especially in the workplace. How do we recognize people with adaptability? Look for times when they made something easy. Look for times when they made something slightly easier than it was. Um, a lot of times I think adaptability can be invisible, but think about that. So think about those moments when things just felt like they fell into a place. It might've been because you had somebody with high adaptability there. Um, also look for when were they totally in control when everybody else felt a little bit out of control. So if you, if you don't have adaptability, that might mean that you need to reflect <laughs> and you need to think backwards. When was this person really unruffled and how can I uh, celebrate that? And then I also think celebrate and recognize great choices that great decisions that, that really took guts to make. Um, my, my dad, grew up as a fighter pilot and and today is still in aviation. And he always taught me that the only bad decision is not making a decision. And adaptability in many cases is about making hard, fast, in the moment, on time decisions. And then sometimes making new decisions um, based on what works or what doesn't, but still being able to progress and make choices. So recognize that that's not always easy and and celebrate those choices. Yeah, and like any of the themes, they don't live in isolation. And two, they don't get off the hook. They need to be stretched and developed. How do we do yeah. that? What are some things we can stretch in adaptability? I think if you want to help somebody with adaptability stretch and grow, you can throw things at their face. <laughs> and I hope somebody quotes me on that Not one. Not literally, but yeah. or maybe even literally. <laughs> maybe even literally. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Um, but I think it's given the opportunity to adapt. Um, look for clients or situations that need immediate attention. Um, don't be afraid to just get them involved. In many cases, that means pick up the phone, even if you didn't plan on it that morning, and say, I've got a situation. Um, and allow them to to, if they're not going to, they don't have to own it, but they can be that friend that helps you get through it. Um, so think about adaptability by proxy, even using them as a, as an adaptability partner, even if they don't have to be completely involved in that project. Chris in the chat room asked a great question when adaptability folks do get ruffled and it does happen. They're, they're not, it, it's not impossible, right? Mm -hmm. How do you recover? And for me with high adaptability, I take a step back, take a couple deep breaths, get some perspective on what's going on try to understand what the next set of, of decisions or things need to be. 
and then re-engage, right? It, I get more frustrated when I can't re-engage than when I, when I, when I, than when I can, no, how was I going to say that? I need to respond, right? I need to be able to do things to it. Everybody's different on this, Chris, but yeah. I, for, for me anyways, that's getting centered again, understanding the framework now. Okay. I've been ruffled. It hasn't worked the way. What's the new framework. And then how can I respond next? Jim, what I love about that is you just said, what was the next thing on my list of how can you sort of stretch and develop adaptability? And it, it sounds like when it, when you're ruffled and you have high adaptability, you just need to turn up the present, the, the attention to what's there. So what I had written was, um, talk through your own responsiveness. Um, questions like, what are you noticing? What should we be aware of? What is happening right now? It's it, Feel your feet on the ground. Uh, feel yourself in the present moment. Um, it might be a way to, to regain a little bit of your control um, with high adaptability, but it's also a way, I think, just to pour into it and invest in it every day. Totally. My favorite question uh, in all this is how do we partner with adaptability? I think because this is really important, very powerful. How do we partner? Um, Megan in the chat room is married to somebody with high adaptability. So this one's for you, Megan. Um, respect their timelines. Don't expect them to, to match yours. Um, and don't judge their readiness to perform by your own preparation routine. So if it takes you a little bit to get your head in the game um, and you see them looking like they're focusing on something totally different right before the game starts, it doesn't mean they're not ready to jump in and, and give it their all. Um, share with them what's going on. Um, it give the now a starring role when you're talking about that. So if you're starting a meeting or sitting down to dinner with somebody with high adaptability, it's probably a better question to say, hey, um, what happened today? Than it is to say, hey, how was your week? Um, give that, the, how, how can you help them really shine a spotlight on the present? Um, serve projects up to them in smaller chunks. Uh, highlight what needs to be done most urgently. And don't be deterred by um, inviting them to things that don't seem like they're in their sandbox. Um, so remember that they're going to thrive with variety and with variance. And you can you can throw something at them that you they probably have never seen before and it'll be it'll be nice. It's, it, it's good for them. And I do thrive in the strategic and I do thrive in the discipline and the deliberative uh, at mm -hmm. times. I need when we talk about those framework by those frameworks are often set by those kinds of people. So I think in those partnerships, uh, Ralph had talked about it a little bit earlier in the chat room, it can be frustrating for those folks who are setting those. And then high adaptability might be trying to change it all the time. Uh, that partnership, that communication is super important. If you're one of those frame makers, as you're dealing with the change makers, you, you need to partner with them in a way and understand how do you take advantage of that in your, you know, in your, uh, in your framework because it's incredibly powerful. And, um, and I need those kinds of people, Micah. I can't, yeah. I can't function without them. And so how do I partner with them? Well, I need those frames. I need the, I need the framework, which they're going to create. Yeah. M Megan in the chat room says, don't ask me about the past. I, I just wash over it generally. I find that even with myself and I've got high communication. So I like to tell stories and I have a hard time telling my own stories because I don't remember them because I'm so focused on on the on the present. So somebody with some of those thought provoking themes, I think, can help you. They can they can be a great partner to somebody with adaptability by noticing what's working and and helping bring that from the past back into the present so that you can talk about it and, and study study it and learn from it. All right, we have some homework to do. Think about my favorite part the week. is our you, challenge. You should follow Micah on Instagram, by the way. You, you should. Guys. You should follow me at Strengths Talk on Instagram. You'll get to see the challenge there and come back and tell us how you're doing. Remember, this is for people who have the theme. It's not a way to cultivate a theme you don't have. It's if you have adaptability, here's a way to, to invest in it. Three different ways. Uh, first, for one work day, this is gonna. This is uh, this is going sort of above and beyond. So if you don't get to this this benchmark, it's okay. But I want you to consider it. If you have high adaptability, pick one work day, and spend no more than thirty minutes on a single project at a time. So if you're somebody who uses an Outlook calendar and your default is to set a meeting for an hour, change that. Cut it in half. Have thirty minute interactions all day long. Just try it for a day. See what happens. S super easy. What's next? Um, what next is check in live, meaning pick up the phone or um, or see somebody in person or FaceTime them. There needs to be um, an audible sense to this, not just an email. Check in live with a different person every hour on the hour for a day. 
Um, and again, that's that's to build the fact that this is a relationship building theme and that not just bouncing back and forth between projects is what adaptability wants, but adapting to, to people, to humans. Um, and number three, mentally pack your, in, in air quotes, your go bag. Um, I don't know if everybody knows what a go bag is, um, but in my world, uh, my husband's in the military and we always have a bag either in the trunk of a car or by a door that's literally packed with whatever he would need if he has to get up in the middle of the night and go respond to something. And so I think about that for people with high adaptability. That's going to sharpen your ability to jump in and be there. So what is it? And I mean, physically, if you had to leave where you were and be present with somebody else, what do you have to have? Um, and you don't have to actually pack it, but I want you to mentally know what physically do I need to take with me if I need to leave my office or leave my my house and go adapt for somebody else so that I can be at my best. It might be things like I need to have a toothbrush, my phone, and my ID. Think about what your own list is um, and and commit that to memory. It's going to be something that will help, um, e- help you adapt even faster. Michael, let's take that one to our Facebook group. So facebook.com slash group slash call to coach. And um, coaches, what's your go bag? And let's think about through, because by the way, you don't have to have adaptability. The military does not do a test for adaptability for its people that are doing this. Your husband, whether he has it or not, had to have a go bag. I think coaches need a coaching go bag, right? Yeah. And, and it's like, what do I need? What tools do I need to keep with me? Because at any given moment, I could have a coaching conversation, whether that's on my phone or whether that's in a it's in a binder, whether it's paper or video, whether it's on the web or in a website, whether it's a conversation, you could have a go conversation. What's the what's the structure you use when you get into a coaching relationship? Okay, like so way. number three just became whether or not you have adaptability. <laughs> if you're a coach, what's your coaching go bag? Yes. What do you yeah. have to have? I'd love to hear, and I think the the exercise in this is those that have high adaptability in their go bag. I think there is some learning that others can do about what are some other things, what, what, people who have high adaptability, what are they using? What kind of resources are they coming up with? How are they doing it? I think there's some very valuable um, very valuable input from from those with adaptability. So thanks for bringing me back on center, Mike. I get I got a little too adaptable there. I tried to adapt that to the whole community. <laughs> no, you can do it. I think let's just think about it as two separate things. So okay. uh, yeah. um, first is just your physical go bag if you have to leave your house, if you have adaptability. But then for everybody, if you're a coach, what's your coaching go bag? What do you need? Um, and I think that's a really great question. I hope that some form of everyone's answer has theme Thursday in it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yes, <laughs> It'd be great for us. So somebody do me a favor, somebody listening, head out to the Facebook group right now, facebook.com slash group slash call to coach. Get that thread going, and then we want to hear from you. What did you go back? Micah, anything else as we wrap it? Go into the no. post show? No. Stick around for post show if you're here live. Yeah. Don't forget, if you join us live, and the only way to get the post show is live, we'd love to have you stay around. We'll be taking questions live from the chat room, just kind of talking about it. It's just kind of one of our favorite things to do for the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes, kind of recap it, talk about some things, kind of stuff off the cuff. So if you can't join us live, we, we're live just about every Thursday. If you want to get a complete list of all the webcasts that we do, you can head out to gallop.eventbrite.com. They're all listed there. Sign up for them so that you get the email notification when we are, you'll get a little reminder from us as well and put it on your calendar. It's a good way to kind of stay up with it. And uh, we'd love to have you come out and join us live here at coaching.gallop.com slash live. We'd remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center. Just send us your questions or comment if you'd like to be a guest blogger. And man, that traffic mic has picked up a little bit here in the last yes. couple of weeks, which is yeah. super fun. Send us an email, uh, coaching at gallup.com. We're looking for four to 600 words, strengths related. We'd like a story. We'd actually like some real results since we're focusing on results. Maybe even a little case study that uh, that you might have, something where you've been successful. Send it, it needs to, to be us. original. That's the one thing I've had to say no to folks about is they've sent me stuff like that's already posted somewhere. Yeah. We can't use that. So no, we can't write us that. something and then we can feature you everywhere. Right on. Put co- put guest blogger in the subject line. Send it to coachingagalp.com and then that will make its way to Micah. Don't forget, we have tons of resources available for you on our coach's blog, coaching.gallup.com. Look on the resources tab. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, you can see a list of all our courses that lead to certification. Courses.gallup.com is the right place to go there. I mentioned the Clifton Strengths Summit that is coming up July 16th, 17th, and 18th. We'd love to see you there. 
you can join us there, cliftonstrengthsummit.com. And it's still time to, at least right now here in April, still time to sign up. If it's after July, you probably join us for 2019 or maybe 2020. Who knows when you're listening to this? Join us on our Facebook page. I mentioned that earlier. That's uh, facebook.com slash groups slash called to coach, all one word, or just search Gallup webcasts inside of Facebook. We want to thank everyone for joining us today. If you're listening live, stay around for the post show. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.